Welcome my beauties, birdies, and bros! My name is Ren, and this is the very first video of 2023, and I figured I'd try something new while teaching myself to animate in the meantime. So gather around for circle time, kiddos, because today we're going to school. We'll be talking about ways to make and improve your art while you're on a budget, or in my case, teaching myself to make art while living the good old broke bitch lifestyle. Trademarked, of course. Some of this advice I learned from my art teachers and the internet over the years, and some of it is what my younger art trash raccoon self thought up. I also just want to add that while you should sink the majority of your budget into a high quality medium, everyone does have to start somewhere, and sometimes that's being a kid with no job or money. In addition, the pieces I'm working on today are bookmarks I'm getting printed for my friends as belated holiday gifts, so we'll be cycling through all six of those as I go through my points. I also have some tutorials and resources linked in the description. With that, please do me the honor of sitting back, scribbling away, and letting yourself relax. Category 1. Make do with what you have. Number 1. One of the biggest life-saving tips I ever had when I was getting into color is learning to make cheap colored pencils more pigmented by soaking them. The method I personally found that worked the best for me while using Crayolas and Arteza pencils was I would actually use a lighter to melt the end of the wax first and then soak the pencils. I don't know what chemical reaction caused it, but the soaked pencils actually for some reason lasted longer than they did if it was just water by itself. This is especially true when I was working in black and white. It's actually really impressive how you can use colored pencils to do like a gray washing effect, kind of. Especially if you use water on a brush on top of it, it can be really helpful. Number two, experiment. Test out your pens, pencils, and paints on whatever surface crosses your desk. My personal favorite thing to paint on is the back of the Chinese New Year bamboo calendars my favorite local restaurant gives out around December. In addition, I just love how paper bags complement microns. The toned effect is very rustic and cool looking. My teacher also used to talk about using manila file folders as well, though I haven't tried that method yet, but it seems like a very cool idea. Number three. Trust me, invest in primer in bulk. Before I discovered the magic that is just so, thanks Mariah Elizabeth, I would spend ages building up color on top of whatever patterned cardboard I'd repurposed, wasting both paint and time, or I'd use the leftover wall primer lying around my house, which was chunky and drier than sandpaper. But good primer, which often isn't too expensive, can make even the most challenging of surfaces just a little bit easier to paint on. Number four, test out things other than standard supplies. I've used a plastic spoon to make flower petals with acrylic paint, cut up gift cards instead of palette knives, and I've even used my own hair when I didn't have a small enough brush. Surprisingly effective. I've also used my own nails to create texture in acrylic paints when there was none. Anything you have laying around the house might be a tool you can use until you can afford the professional stuff. Number five, Using fundamentals and exercises to make your cheap materials look better, like making cheap medias look varied by learning to blend using cross-hatching or pointillism. Something I also used to do was I used to use strong light sources and negative space to give the illusion of high contrast even when my pens and pencils weren't actually that dark at all. It's something I took advantage a lot of when a friend was trying to teach me to be less heavy-handed by only using a ballpoint pen. By the way, those cheap pens are probably some of the best ink I have ever come across before I went and started using Microns. Number six. I actually experimented with making my own charcoal by burning sticks with a lighter outside and harvesting the ash, or using the sticks themselves after they had been charred on paper. It's a pretty cool shading effect. I even experimented with using the charcoal as kind of like a paint, kind of like a really like semi-transparent watercolor. It's not as effective as watercolor pigment, but if you really need something in a pinch, it can kind of work if you're patient. Number seven, one of my favorite methods of all time that actually works, using coffee and tea as a paint. You can also use it to stain paper, which is what I mainly used it for because I really love the vintage aesthetic. Number eight, save money by working small. I used to do studies with microns and pointillism, my favorite form of shading, even though it is painful physically and it's time consuming traditionally, on a very small scale, sometimes only around two inches squared in the margins of some of my papers. 
Number nine, using online tutorials to make your own supplies like this one I've linked in the description on how to make a kneaded eraser. Number 10, if you want to frame your work, the cheapest way to do it is by working with standard sizes like 8x10 or 12x16. Don't be me who has over 12 art pieces already printed, cut, and have glued onto map board, ready to frame, and none of them are the same size nor are they standard. <sighs> Another way is by finding frames at a thrift store or a discount shop. Category 2, become a saving savant. Number 1. Go to Goodwill or discount stores to find knockoff supplies and books. The dollar store is your friend. Don't let any naysayers poor shame you. Personally, if you live on the East Coast like I do, if you have a Ross in your area, I would highly recommend going to their kids department. They often have a large selection of stationary supplies. I actually picked up a really good like off-brand watercolor set from them for only like $6. I still use it. It's amazing. Plus they also have a bunch of things you can paint on and there's even like all of these different sketchbooks. I have like three bullet journals from there that are like watercolor worthy paper. It's just, you can actually find a lot of really good stuff over there. If you don't have as big of a stationary department, you can also find things at like, you know, Walmart, Target, TJ Maxx, especially if you go into the clearance section. The reason I love Ross the most is because most high quality items are clearance to begin with. So it just, it's a really big savings if you have something like that in your area. If you don't have a Ross, I would recommend trying to find a substitute. Number two, I also recommend finding pirate, um, yes, privateered. Privateered is the word I mean to use. Art textbooks and guidebooks. Hypothetically speaking, of course, uh, most of the time, if I couldn't afford a book, I would Google the title and add PDF at the end. I'd usually find it. Hypothetically speaking, of course, in the hypothetical. Totally not being serious at all. I, I definitely recommend that no artist ever do this, and it's totally not effective at all and does not save you a ton of money. No sir, no ma'am, no mix, no, no, definitely don't do it. Number three, take advantage of coupons and stackable deals in order to save on a product you want. This is especially true with Michaels. I still will have multiple Michaels customer accounts that I can use the daily barcode on to use it multiple times a day on different purchases if need be. You cannot do it all in one trip though, but if you go back later in the day, especially if it's with a different cashier, this definitely does work and hey, it's free discounts anyone can use that recharges every single day. Then again, I don't do it as often as I used to, but then again, I also don't go out of the house much. Number four, snag up freebies. You can never have too much art supplies. Granted, I am a craft hoarder, so take what I say on that with a grain of salt. I literally make art out of trash. <laughs> My personal favorites are the free pens from Bank of America. If you have a Bank of America and you're like stopping by and they have a free pen bucket, snag like four of them. They're extremely smooth and the ink really holds well. That goes for most bank pens though. So just, if you ever have an opportunity to get a free pen, eraser, notepad, what have, what have you, snag it. You never know when you might have a project that it might be useful for. I want to include this in a story time later, but my crowning broke bitch achievement is when my graphic design teacher needed to get rid of like over a hundred pounds of map board. Like the man literally pulled it in his big Ford pickup truck and it was higher than the truck bed. I'm talking easily almost 200 sheets. I think I counted like 212 because I was the crazy one who decided to get under all of this map board and count it by hand so we could split it up amongst the AP kids. And I got to take home as much as I could carry. And yes, I did hurt myself lugging almost my entire body weights in sheets, but it was worth it. And y'all, I literally have enough map board to last me the next seven plus years, if not a decade, though many of them are over three feet squared, which is, you know, really big. So they've just been sitting on a dining room chair since I graduated because they won't fit in any cabinet cupboard or drawer. Number five, like I was saying, leech off your art class or club, if they have a material too expensive for you to purchase, but your teacher will let you practice with it, practice with it. My teacher literally gave me a bunch of his homemade and recycled paper because he saw how much I loved using it. It was because of my high school's art department that I was able to try out microns, watercolors, gouache, charcoals, pastels, and even drawing with a Wacom pen tablet as well as Adobe softwares because I sought learning those things out. Not every school will have such an extensive library, but try finding what you can where you can. Number six, you can sometimes find free art supplies on websites like eBay or Craigslist, or at the very least discounted lots of supplies. Number seven, 
I haven't done this one myself, but I did know one person who went dumpster diving behind a craft store. They got really lucky and found some good condition pens and paints. Though remember to check your local laws regarding this idea. Number eight. Now, this one I have done and it's fantastic. You can get free shipping supplies from UPS. I really love mailing art to friends and family and having leftovers for projects is really good too. Number nine, you can use online resources like YouTube, but there are also college courses you can find for free. One I've had on the back burner that I'm super excited about trying when I get the chance is the free tracks at artprof.org. You can also try out some Skillshare classes that are free too, though they're a bit limited. And of course, if you do have a question that's really specific, you can try asking a relevant art community on Reddit. Thank you so much for watching till the end, and if you have any ideas of your own, please comment them down below. If you like this video, you can subscribe as well to hear more of my coffee-powered rambles. I'm really excited to keep working on animating my YouTube intro, because I think it'll look really cool, and it'll give me more time to work on learning Adobe Animate so I can make my first story time. I think you'll like it, it's about how I got my terrifying second grade teacher fired, and it's a pretty interesting story with some sweet justice. But until then, stay hydrated, stay safe, and be yourself. Ciao!